Thank you, And there goes uh, Paul's amount of Spanish. I said, there goes all of Paul's Spanish. Amigo. Good day, everyone. Good day. That's what you want to call Monday. Howdy from Dallas. Hey, Drew. Uh, what's going on? Uh, Dave. Hey, Dave. What's up, Ed? Yeah. Hello, Johnny, John, Johnny, Johnny, look at that. Danny. San Diego in the house along with some Phoenix. Cesar. <sighs> so how you doing, buddy? Uh, I'm okay. You know, Tony from Chicago. What's yeah. up, everyone? What's up, Ryan? Yeah? Good weekend? Uh, sure. What's up? What's up? Uh, why does everybody always ask us about N NVX? NVX not Eric. is a, not a, like, we can't sell NVX. NVX is only for Sonic Electronics. It is a in-house brand of theirs. Yeah. So, though we've, we've played with it just because some people have brought it into us, it's not anything we can carry or sell. So, um, that's why you don't see a lot of people with it or see any other place that yes. has it. Cause it's their house brand. Detroit in the house. How was the Thanksgiving weekend? Thanksgiving weekend was good. Actually, we uh, we spent the day. Hey, Sean, what size shirt do you wear? Um. Anyways, uh, we spent the uh, Thanksgiving. We actually went over to a buddy of ours, the yes. two of us, along with uh, he brought the junior who was the hit of the show. Yes. Um, walking around his tippy toes. <laughs> um. That's not hey guys. Nervous. Yeah. So Carl. Hey, Nando just joined. I know. Right? Um, so we had a good time there. You were sick, so you didn't, you, you didn't get to eat anything. Six eggs? Really, dude? Long sleep. Well, slow it down. I'm not giving you any custom crap. I just have something that, that I got the other day that might be for you. Anyways. Maybe. Um, for those of you who need boxes <coughs> built, Sean Frederick, hit him up. He's the Bright Star guy. So, Bright Star. Just do a search Bright Star Car Audio. Yeah. There's a plug number one, even though they're not paying us for it. They should be. Yeah. Put your name um, in there, man. Yeah. Why don't you put a WW on there somewhere, Sean, yes. so people actually know where to find it? I'm a big guy. I like big. Oh, Jesus. Swimming. Okay. All right. Well, you're on your own then, Swimmy. Um, <laughs> put, a, put a link to the Bright Star, will you, Sean? Make make our lives a little bit easier. Yeah. Um, what's up, Adam? What's up? What's up? From, from Mobile. Brian from um, Colorado. Yeah, keep keep shouting them out, and I'll do some talking here for a couple minutes while you're shouting out for us. Yeah. Uh, went to actually a real close friend of mine. Believe it or not, is uh, Jesus 4X. Holy crap! I don't have anything. I no, make. come on. I don't know Olga the tank maker. Um, <laughs> yes, it's almost time to make tamales. I don't know how to oh, make it, but god, I know how to eat it. Oh, they're so good. I know, right? Oh my god, I gotta try that place, man. Oh, I, I told you. I, I gotta yeah, try that good. place. Love tamales. Yeah. Couldn't find those t-shirts. Um, okay, so it is... Uh, go to Teespring, type in the number 5 star winter. Or yeah. just go to Teespring and type in five star car stereo we have an actual store there so you can go to teespring <laughs> slash store slash five star car stereo all spelled out no spaces just f-i-v-e-s-t-a-r correct uh what i'll do is if you watch this again on youtube uh we'll have a link a uh, right 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 here this area right here will be normally it's a link to dean and fernando's tool drawer what we'll do is we'll make it a the url for the um teespring, teespring. Mm -hmm. and of course any current video you watch there's always a link in the show notes the description to those shirts so you can you can just simply go to any youtube video and go down into the show notes and there's there's a link there so right when the five star video games released. Oh, Jesus, wouldn't that be cool? I suck at video games though, so it'll never come out. Anyways, back to Thanksgiving real quick. We had turkey, we had uh, red mm. beans and rice. Um, a friend of yeah. mine, a friend of ours uh, that we are, that I've known forever is one of our vendors, a uh, close friend of mine. Um, his uh, wife is uh, does some awesome, where's she from? Uh, she's from uh, Brazil. Brazil. And she's Japanese, Japanese from Brazil. Yes. 
awesome sauce. God, man, she you can make, make awesome, oh, sauce, awesome sauce, awesome everything. So yeah, we get this so Brazilian good. Japanese mix on the food she makes. It's just, oh, it's yeah. incredible. So Definitely. we had a really good time with that. Um, Polyfill loosely glue. Yeah, okay, and um, then Saturday we worked. Yep. Friday we worked. Yep. We did the uh, the Thanksgiving show was a hit. I'm glad you guys enjoyed that. Friday was was biz was eh, Friday really wasn't that busy. Saturday was a little busier. Kevin. Oh, what's Kevin up, Kevin? Geologist. What's going Geologist. on, buddy? Study them, yeah. ch chase them rocks. There you go. Buddy. Um, <laughs> another live episode. Yes. Hey, Tony. Tony, Tony from, from the UK. UK. What's up, buddy? Yeah. How you been? Um, what are you crying, buddy? Don't cry. Oh, he's probably tired. Oh, sure. <laughs> he's like, oh, he's very sick. He's like you. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, I'm sick, man. Yeah. Whoop, whoop. Gee, yeah, Sean, so. just put www.brightstar, whatever the heck it is, dot com. Yeah, yeah, he already did. Oh, he already did. Okay, yeah. all right, never mind. Thanks, thanks, Sean. I'm not yeah. watching, so. Hey, Jason, Jason's how are you, house. buddy? So Saturday we did the live show, and then after the live show, you went home. I went and picked up Haley because she actually worked Saturday night. So we got a late start, but then we headed over to Disney, stayed the night, and we went to Hollywood Studios and watched the... Carson, what's up, Ethan? California. Um, watch the uh, the new light show they have at Hollywood Studios on the uh, stupid Tower of Terror. Okay. Totally disappointed. It was cool, but compared to previous years, like when they had the Osborne Spectacle of Lights, was was that giant light show I showed you before? Mm -hmm. That's gone. Wow. Um. So because they knocked that whole area down to make room for the new Star Wars Land and Toys Land. So, total bummer. But anyways, enough Star Wars talk. Thank you, Sean. I know Fernando corrected me. He's been watching. Yeah. Um. 03, no, that's a tough one. 03 VW Beetle? No. Uh, you mean, I've seen it done, but you really got to go crazy. I want a date with the with mouse. mouse. <laughs> you know when you're coming, man, I'll meet you over there. Thank you. There it is again, brightstarcaraudio.com. It is brightstarcaraudio.com. Yeah. Oh, thank you. That was easy enough. Uh, and for those of you guys that are wondering, Fro's House is from Stereo King. King so correct. if you want to check out another YouTube channel, go ahead and check out Stereo Kings on YouTube. Um... So we're throwing out, so that's, that's the proto number three. We'll throw out Dean and Fernando's tool drawer, dnftooldrawer.com. There yeah. again, we'll have a, a banner right here. We'll split it between the Teesprings and whatnot. So the shirts, right. the shirts have been starting to move. So um, you can now get, of course, the cool winter hoodie. You can get the T-shirt. You can get Vote for Nando. We have yes. a new Vote for Nando shirt up. And on the back, it's got a cool logo that says, uh, what does it say? That's five star cars. No, no, make America base again. Mm, make America base. Make America base again. Yes. So then we got mugs. We got onesies uh, for babies. Onesies for babies. Yeah. Um. So yeah, we got a whole big thing. Eventually, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually take the DNF tool drawer and put it there so we can link to it all out at Teespring. Um. But yeah, and uh, thank you guys that have been buying the stuff. Um, very cool. Vote for Nando. Hey, buddy. yeah. Don't Vote forget for hoodie. Ooh, okay. Oh, okay. Uh, well, the only reason why we didn't do hoodies because we were trying to keep it true to the, to the, uh, you know, Napoleon Dynamite style of shirt. Yeah. Um, I don't, the hoodie, I don't know. I don't I mean, know. I suppose I could. Eh, what let's the hell? Let's see how I mean, it works a, with yeah, the shirt. Let's see how the shirts do first because, you know, you guys, <laughs> I, think, I think, yeah. Yeah. And thank you, thank you, Jason. And there we go, Jason. Last, Don't last point of the night is Patreon. Yes. So, yes, and Jason, thank Please you so much for being a thank supporter you. of Patreon. Anyone that does support us via Patreon, you can give a dollar. We ask for three. You can give us a dollar. You can give us 50 cents a month. I don't care. Uh, it just shows us that you care and that what we're doing. You can just give us 10 bucks if you like. I'm not asking for the money. I'm just saying if you want to support us and feel like, hey, these guys really helped me out, I'm going to throw them a buck or two. Go right ahead. There again. No pressure. We, yeah, no you know, pressure. I mean, I, we do this for a living, so it's not like, you know, Correct. We're, we're dying here. You're dying. No. Really dying. Yeah, I'm, I am. Yeah. Um, but you can find us on Patreon, and then your name will be in the credits at the end of these videos, the weekly videos. You'll see your cool name scroll by so that you can tell your friends and family, hey, yeah. look, I'm on YouTube. Yes. My so. name is in YouTube. So one thing we the video we shot today that isn't up yet don't get don't get all excited it'll be up hopefully by the end of this week we did we we got to finally play with the inexpensive um, <laughs> yes I'm sorry uh, voltmeter oscilloscope tool that yes. we bought in um, so we got to play with that uh, we did a cool comparison between well you guys will just have to wait to see hopefully that'll be up by Monday uh, Paul takes all the money Paul takes none of the money 
Paul takes all your money. Um, <laughs> uh, so that'll be nice to see. Uh, and then we have a surprise on that one we're not going to talk about today yeah. because I have to do some research first to figure Let's out how to do this. Let's leave from Australia. Oh, screw it. I'm just going to tell you. We're going to give the thing away. So we, we tested the meter. Uh, we're going to give it away. I don't know how to do it yet. I still have to do all that just stupid stay research. Tuned. Stay tuned but we for will, that. We will be giving the meter away. We don't need it. Uh, we did the test. We shot the video. So we're just going to give it away. Um, so we'll have some kind of funky contest. We yeah. don't know yet. Hopefully next week we'll be talking about it here on Facebook as well as on YouTube. Yeah. And then we'll get a cool viewer and you can have it because I don't need it. And yeah. you, you don't need it. So. Well, the winner can have it. Yeah. So yeah. we're going we're gonna to give that thing away. Right. Don't All feel right. bad, Fernando. I'm sick. Ooh, redhead yeah, sick man. at the house. Damn. Damn. Okay, so we right, got enough let's futzing around. Give us some give us some uh, Ryan. Uh, yes, Ryan. Hello, Ryan. Uh, I totally I lost. You totally lost? X, yeah. We're X, here. We're still here. XS Power D3400 12 volts AGM. AGM, yeah. For $285, it's that a good deal brand for the battery? XS, yeah, that's a good brand. Yeah. Um, depending on the size, that sounds about right because those are expensive batteries. AGM batteries are also the better of the two batteries or the couple batteries, so yes. Yeah. Um, all right. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, I would, I would buy it. I mean, because I know what we sell the SPV44 for yeah. is between a hundred, about 160 <laughs> to 180 bucks, I think. Yeah. So that's, I think that's the bigger one. So depending on the size, I mean, if that's the size you need, then yeah. All right. Uh, Christian, uh, of the LC7i to the ADPRS network mode on the budget versus the 608. What are your thoughts? Say that now. What was the LC7? Of the LC7i okay. to the ADPRS. Oh, okay. Yeah. Instead of... All right. Yeah. Actually, if you have an ADPRS, you don't need the LC7i. The LC, the ADPRS actually has line-level input. Right. So you don't actually need a... Uh, the idea behind the ADPRS, one of the ideas behind it is that you could take a factory system, <coughs> if you could find a place like with a pocket, you could put the ADPRS into the factory pocket. It has a line level input as well as an auxiliary input so that you can actually, you can do what you're describing without having to use like an LC7i yeah, or any of that stuff. You don't, you don't need to do that. So you can actually run right into it. Now, if you need to use an LC7i so that you can do a bunch of summing into the ADPRS, then that that would make sense. Um, at that point, honestly, I'd do a 608. I, I wouldn't I wouldn't waste my time with the ADPRS. 608. Um, I would do the six. I would just do a 608. That that yeah. I mean, but that was that was the original idea behind the ADPRS was that could be your upfront cool What's processor up, slash EQ slash source unit. Okay. Right. All right. Uh, Tyson. Uh, 2016 Nissan Sentra with the Pioneer. ABH 291BT, the alternator, uh, they make like a whining noise. Where is the base ground spa for the head unit? So the thing I'm going to ask you first is did you use any of the preamp section or, you, or is it just deck power giving you alternator whine? The other thing you have to keep in mind too is that on a, um, a Nissan, you, you need to ground the radio not using the factory plug. So any piece of metal behind the radio usually because those radios would screw in and that would be the ground so wherever you're screwing the plastic kit in those are great grounds you can you can use any one of them just don't make the rookie mistake that everyone does where they take and put a ring terminal on and they put the kit on and then they put the screw on and so they have the plastic kit holding the, the no put a screw through the side or put a screw somewhere down low but any any piece of That's metal there in the dash will be a uh, what's up Micah um, will be a uh, a good ground. Right. All right. But if you are using amplifiers, you may have shorted out the preamp section and there's an internal fuse in there that you can't actually replace and then you actually have to ground the RCAs to the chassis of the radio because you blew the ground shield. I saw a picture you, like that. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, right. yeah, it's stupid. Yeah. All right, Donnie. Uh, hey, Dean, is there a right way to put polyfill inside the box? Like you use glue inside the stuff. Uh, in the porter box. Also, pros and cons. I heard that they can get inside of the subwoofers and destroy them. Is it real? Thanks for the advice. Okay, so 
40 boxes, I would definitely maybe staple it in. I, would, I wouldn't I would get the polyfill, the, the stretchy pillow kind. <laughs> I would get the matting kind. Um, like, kick, like, like Kicker uses... Stinger the, Australia. Hey, what's what's going on? So like Kicker uses this stuff here. This is what you want. You want this style here because this isn't going to get sucked into the subwoofer. Yes, if you had this, the polyfill, I could see where it could suck in, maybe catch on fire. I've never seen it, but I'm sure it could happen. So that's why I think Kicker uses this. And they put polyfill in all their boxes. And what they do is they staple and glue it into the sides and all around. And then in the big chamber where, where there is an open hole, they just fold it into a ball like this. It's stuff it in there. Ow, that hurt. And that pretty much does the trick. Now, how much polyfill you need? I would start with just lining the inside of the box. And really, if the box is small, is really the only time you'd need polyfill. If the box is the right size, you don't need the polyfill. Right. So, but if it's small and you want, go ahead and just start with lining the outside of the box, maybe just staple it in place. I don't know if I'd use glue, because yeah. that would just get sticky and messy. Yeah. Um, yeah. That stuff is okay. Cool. Dacron. Okay. Dacron. Yeah. Okay. All right, Dustin. Apparently, Dustin say. Apparently, Jason shops at Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding, me too. I don't. Uh, whatever. Uh, okay, Dustin. Dustin say, um, when are you gonna do another 911 video? I had to do one last week. I posted it in your page. I saw your pictures, dude. That was crazy. Oh, you guys. Yeah. Oh. Okay, right, you gotta I'm gonna show you. Okay, yeah. You show. I um, think that was like an F-150 or something like that. But that was crazy, man. Crazy. Thank you for good job. Australia. Yeah, I love their page. I follow. Uh, their yeah, Instagram I follow. Page. They have page. a they have a YouTube channel too. Yeah, they have um, cool stuff that I watch. They got yeah. lots of cool stuff. Yeah. They, they just put up a video on CAN bus accessories, so they have a line of CAN bus accessories. So like, if you're just trying to do specific things, yeah, you can have the CAN bus turn on. That's pretty. <laughs> that was pretty cool. I was like, I don't know if I ever need Rafael those. Those are from New York. Yeah, they need as heck. Um, all right. So what were what were we talking about? Oh, oh, 911 videos. Yeah. Um, okay, so Install Diaries is pretty much taken over. Uh, I'm not going to lie to you. We, like, today we put up what was called uh, From the Install Bay Classic, uh, called just Bay Classic, because I found a bunch of videos that we had shot before we switched to the new format. Cartoon of, shot. Of What's going on, buddy? The, uh, of the Install Diaries. Mm -hmm. And I was like, these are still great videos. I want to edit them and get them out. Um, the 911 stuff, it started because we weren't sure how we were going to move into filming daily like we are. Mm -hmm. uh, it was just kind of like we were doing tests. It was, a, it was a great test run as far as how to make these things doable. So it's not that we won't have any more 911s. Yeah. It's just a lot of them are going to get thrown into the install diaries unless it's a big one like we did where we just call it a straight up 911. But so yeah, install diaries is kind of taken over. We were talking about that today. It's like it's taken over from the install bay. It's taken over 911. It's taken over cars from the install bay. Um, so it's like all, you know, those idiot. Each one of the install diaries takes about four to five hours to edit, um, and like we're putting out like three of them a week, two mm -hmm. to three a week, um, plus the other content that we put out. So. It's just, we're, we're trying to we're, we're trying to turn as fast as we can to what you guys like to watch so that we have you know entertainment for for you guys Correct. because we realize that we've made the mistake of making our lives part of your lives I'm joking it's a great thing so we know features like 911s we like to do but I don't know if we're they're gonna be standout 911s anymore they're probably just gonna be rolled into install diaries and maybe have a silly name like oh here comes another 911 or you know, so we're people love we're, we're work we're you know we're figuring it out as we go. I mean, yeah. even though we've been doing this for like four years, it's really only been about a year and a half that we've really put right. tons and tons of effort yeah. into it. So no, like Dustin, he actually have like headdress and like crazy oh, stuff. Was oh, that was I'm sure that was, was crazy. Great. But he yeah. did a good job. Yeah. Cool. All right. I'll try. All it. right. Um, let's say Kevin. Yes. Uh, I made it halfway to you guys last week, <laughs> and I spent Thanksgiving in Texas. Oh. I suffered a bumper car injury, Ooh. and I have bruises, ribs. Ow. To, oh, wow. Man, that's crazy. I Dang. Hope you're sorry, okay sorry about that, man. Sorry about your luck. Hope you get yeah. better. Right. Cars will heal faster than bodies, usually. 
<laughs> yeah. Especially my age. But anyway. Wanda? That's it, right? Yeah. You all, um, uh, Matthew, uh, you able to make a double din dash? Yeah, we talked about for, that. For uh, 2003? Yeah, yeah. yeah no. Okay. For the Volkswagen? <coughs> That's a tough one. I've actually yeah. seen it done, but I've never actually done it. You have to do a lot of stretching, a lot of plastic. Hey, Eric, uh, un saludo, carnalito, como estas? Um, Alright, so let's see, Danny, wonder how loud, how loud it will be if you guys hook up. <laughs> oh, the subs in the background. The background. <laughs> Uh, be a wall of subs. You know, if, yeah. yeah, I've always been asked that question. Yeah. Anytime you have a wall of subs, there's always one guy that walks in and says, wonder how it would be really loud. It would be really and actually, loud. it's funny because one year Kenwood did a display where they hooked up 16, 16 subwoofers to the little four, the little monoblock amplifier that they had and played that and was like, you guys should do this demo in your store. And I was like, yeah, I'm good. Uh, <laughs> all right, Cesar. Cesar Madrid say, hey Dean, how can I convince my wife to put stereo system in her van? <laughs> I can't convince my wife to do anything. Exactly. Man. I mean, what are you kidding me? <laughs> um, I, you know, I was, you know, you, buy whatever she wants. Start small. You know, a lot of the times, like I, I know when I when I first started <coughs> um, with with Sue, it was like I added a subwoofer. And then when I added a subwoofer, she was like, oh, that sounds cool. Okay. But it, was, it wasn't it was like crazy subwoofer. It was like I added one subwoofer. I didn't add two like I had. Because she was like, I don't want what you have. And I was like, then I added one sub. And then one sub turned into new highs. And then yeah. a five-channel amplifier. And, of course, you know, CarPlay radio. So start small, what I guess would be the best answer for that. And always pay attention to what she actually wants. Right. Don't try to turn the narrative to whatever you're trying to do. Yeah. High five, Sean. Um, he say Fernando, high five. Bingo. All right, uh, Ashley. Uh, what are your thoughts on the full calls? Uh, worth the hype? Oh yeah, totally worth the hype. Uh, you know, we've talked about this on the YouTube live show, and oh, it was totally worth the hype. It was. It, it sounded amazing. <laughs> uh, well, we have a boom wall. Of course, you have a boom wall. You guys got like five stores. I mean, what the heck? Um, but no, um, yes, they were totally worth the hype. Uh, Jason was correct when he said that the uh, the flax were totally worth it. They totally yeah. are worth it. Um, you know, as far as if you're comparing new priced K2s, uh, settling on the flax, and I use the term settling as just like you're not actually settling, you're still getting an amazing, awesome speaker that, yeah, it's, it's really close i mean it's it's obviously not k2s but yeah. damn man you know wow i you know d definitely wouldn't kick that out of bed right uh matthew uh any other single dim flip out screen radios with the car plate other than the pioneer no easy one go ahead all right um what's up from cali oscar what's up? uh did you order your sound system stuff yet <laughs> <laughs> okay so funny thing you should answer that you should ask that yeah. we actually yes. the, the company i was going to buy it from was in today and we were talking about it and they were like don't order yet and i was like don't order yet. But, but, yeah. and they were like no don't order yet yeah and i was like Okay. But I went on so, it. And I'm like, but, I, you know, I, and they're like, just don't order yet. So it's probably going to be another two weeks before I can order. So we'll see. Okay. Okay. All right. Let's see. Corey. Corey say, I can run a ROEQ on my ABH 4600BT as I'm using a micro bypass in front what I heard. I think it prevents the auto EQ from working. Any solutions other than... Uh, okay, so yeah. I, I get it. So you have a 4600 and you're trying to run auto EQ. Yeah. Couple things, the micro bypass has nothing to do with <coughs> auto EQ because we install every radio with a micro bypass and we don't have these problems. It needs to get plugged into the aux jack on the back of the radio and the radio needs to be in standby. Okay, a lot of people try to go to auto EQ when the radio is on, <coughs> radio has to be in standby. Then you go to audio, the EQ settings, scroll down, and it should be ready to go. There's no other reason why you wouldn't be able to get into the auto EQ circuit other than that. Other than if you're not using the Pioneer microphone and it's not getting the right resistance into the radio. 
because it senses that to know that the microphone is connected and not connected. Yeah. And it shouldn't matter, like we typically would run an aux jack out using male to female adapter to plug into it and then put our microphone in and it would work just fine. So we know it works. The only thing I can think of you might not be putting it in standby because it'll stay grayed out. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Wayne say, hey, what's up guys? Fernando, turn around and look the beautiful view. Don't give me a break. <laughs> um, well, that was in the YouTube live. And don't forget. Oh. Thought... Yeah. That was a good one. I don't remember. The... Oh, okay. yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. Jesus Christ. Okay. I only said it a hundred times. Can you get it now? I got it now. Jesus. Oh, my Sorry. God. Sorry, oh. Wayne. Sorry, dude. Total uh. brain fart. <laughs> All right, Ryan, do you guys do a lot of dash cams? If you so, what's the best dual uh, camera setup under 200 bucks? We only have the Kenwood cameras <laughs> in right now. Uh, yeah. That's a market that I really want to get into. Um, yeah, Jason, do you guys do that? Let me know and uh, put it in the comments. What do you recommend? What, if you guys got yeah. a dual camera system that you guys recommend. Um, okay, go ahead. All right, Danny, uh, Dean, did you say the PDX V9? uh gains is really sensitive yes. how can you tell or what features uh, i should look for the owner's manual i okay. have a rockford punch 800.2 that i don't know if it has sensitive gains um okay so that's not anything that any manufacturer okay so the question is i made the comment that the <laughs> pdx v9 as well as all alpine amplifiers our inputs are very sensitive and basically what that means is they actually have a clip circuit built into them so that when you're actually clipping the input of the amplifier, it automatically shuts down the amplifier. So anytime you try to overload that input, the amplifier automatically shuts off. Uh, there you go. What'd you say? Yes, I like the Moment Dash Cam Dual Cam. Memento. Memento. All right, so there you go. Check out the Memento Dash Cam. Uh, if you, I'm it's sure they'll like ship it to you. There you go. So give uh, uh, Jason Jason a, uh, at, um, a call at uh, Stereo Kings. Stereo Kings. Stereo oh. Kings. Okay. Yeah. So anyways, um, sorry, total brain fart. I'm trying to think and talk at the same time. Can't do that. Um, oh, Jason can put like, you know. What were we, what were we talking about? Uh, oh, we were talking about PDX V9. All right. So the input, all right. So the input sensitivity on, on all Alpines, when you when you click the input, they automatically shut the amplifier off. It's like a, it's like a steel gate that just boom comes down, shuts the amplifier off, and then you have to turn the gains down, turn the key on and off until you get that just right. So think of it as like a DD1 that's actually really cruel and mean, but works great because it's designed to protect. So instead of just a light that comes on, it just shuts down the amp. Um, so we know their amplifiers are. are well, the reason why we call it sensitive is because. They're really, I mean, you, you sometimes can't get much gain out of them at all. They just don't like that circuit kicks in way sooner than I think it should. But then again, we never have any blown amplifiers and or blown speakers. So all I'm right. not going to complain. What? Ton. Ton tries to say, uh, can you guys give my son? Yeah, give him a shout out. Leo. Yeah. Give him a shout out. Why, give him a shout out. Mid conversation. Yeah. Go right ahead. Hey, buddy. Leo. Leo. Go to bed. Um, yeah, no, don't go to bed. Just keep watching, buddy. Go to bed. Uh, your keep say. watching with your dad. Candy's bad. Um, <laughs> anyways, as far as the Rockford goes, no, the Rockford's inputs are, are pretty normal. Um, they actually take a lot of voltage input, and you can typically, you know, you can clip the input section if you want with no problem on a Rockford. Um, the Power Series. Now, the Punch Series has the DD1 technology built into it, which is really cool, and is why I kind of lean more towards the Punch Series amplifiers and <laughs> or the new Power Series amplifiers, the Minis, yeah. that have all that circuit built into it. I'm hoping that eventually the, the current Punch Series amplifiers will get a revamp and we'll get that circuit built into it. Okay, enough time. Hello right. from Sweden. Hello from Sweden. Okay. Uh, all right, uh, Victor, it's worth to run in a separate power wire to the 8200 NEX besides the harness? No, uh, I've never ran a separate power wire to an 8200 or any NEX radio for that matter. The only time I, the only time we run a separate power wire is if we're doing like an Alpine brick amp or something like that. We'll go ahead and run a uh, 10 gauge out to the battery or a 12 gauge um, just to power that amp up. Other than that, never had an issue yet. 
Uh, what do you think about Morel? Uh, Hi-Fi equipment. Everyone always asks that question. We've yeah. said it before. I love Morel. I've always He's loved Morel. Morel guy. It's the only brand that we don't carry. I wish we carried. Um, all my home audio is Morel. Yeah. All right. Uh, the mirror. Uh, what kind of backup camera with review, review mirror screen do you recommend? Um, check out Echo Master at EchoMaster.com. Those are the products we sell. They do have a mirror that you can pick up. It's got the little 4.3 inch screen in it for viewing, but they have like 500 items on their site. You can narrow it down by search, but yeah, check out EchoMaster.com. All right, John say, happy Tuesday morning from Australia. My hoodie is in due here today or tomorrow. Awesome. Make sure you tag us yes. on Instagram. I Instagram, love to see them. Instagram, Facebook. Because um, believe it or not, I actually haven't ordered us any of those yet. So uh, I know I, I'm terrible. Uh, it's I, I know, I'm I'm working on it. You guys, there's only so many hours in the day. Um, but yeah, cool, awesome. And yes, we are living in the past, according to Australia and New Zealand. James, say hi to James. He's hey, not James. here, but James at Car Audio Inc. He was the first this morning. Yeah, well, because yeah. it was already. He's up already. <laughs> middle of totally. the afternoon. You welcome, buddy. Very excited. My son is very excited. Awesome. All right, keep Leo, going. Leo, that's Leo. Yeah. Uh, all right, uh, Ryan, there is no six CD player aftermarket option currently, right? Correct. Customer wants a radio, but wants to keep six CD changers. No more. Uh, okay. I don't think if they This make is my CD current changer. six CD changer right here. Okay. 2000. It's uh, this is it. I hold six CDs inside of this. It's oh, yeah, pretty more awesome. Than six CDs, Matty. No, it's only six. So introduce yeah. them into the now. Uh, Nick, uh, your opinion on the hybrid audio? Um, we have one really good customer that is a big hybrid audio fan. He's yes. got a Hyundai. Yeah. Uh, he's got all PDX amplifiers, and we just got done putting in a PD. Uh, DM608 to power it all off of his Kenwood head unit. He was dying for an EQ. Even though his his Kenwood head unit has time correction, EQ, all that fun stuff, yeah. he just had, he was like, man, because I'm like, dude, you don't need it. He's like, I need a DM608. And we're like, okay, fine. Let's put in a DM608. And it's all active. So he has uh, the two and a half, the tweeter and the mid bass and a subwoofer all powered off a of DM608. Sounds amazing. The only complaint that I, that I had about any of it was the tweeters that were black. The anodized, the anodized, anodized, the anodized black tweeters turned gold. I've never seen that before in car audio. I've seen black anodized stuff turn gold from the sun, but I've never seen it in a tweeter. And so, like, he blew a tweeter, so he's got one black tweeter, one gold tweeter. I'm like, for as much as you pay for those tweeters, there's no freaking way. But other than that, they sounded amazing. They're awesome. I mean, we tuned the shit out. Of, I had the heck out of that car. Correct. And uh, it was, yeah, they're, they're good speakers for sure. All right, Fran from Maryland. Hey. Um, let's see. Uh, Dan from Nebraska. Robert from Redwood City, California. Rafael from New York. Uh, Stinger, do you hear about? You Sting. say Stinger Australia. What? Love your videos. Oh yeah, yeah, we talked about that. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Um, let me see. Uh, that stuff is called. Oh, that's Jason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Donald, say, do you guys play video games? I do not play video games at all. Um, I'm, I'm sure I'm going to. Uh, you you like to play video games? Uh, I used to, but now with Sebastian and a little bit more older, probably he's gonna want to. So yeah, I I don't, I, I don't have the hand-eye coordination to. This. I could play Atari back in the day. I had an Atari really? 2600. I could you know suck at that just as good as anyone else. Um, Solitaire is about as excited as I get on video games. I just I I don't have the patience or time to learn that shit. That stuff. God, I don't, it's word of the night. Okay. Did you say hi to Gartonin shop? I think you did. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I only Christian. like Pong. Exactly. Who didn't love Pong? Okay. I hate Super Mario. Uh, Sue can play video games. Really? Oh yeah. Sue's like, dude. I uh, one year I bought her. They I had all these retro games, games that you could buy. It took like eight double A's. Plugged them in the TV. Yeah. Dude, she sat there for two hours and played all. And I'm just like, and she's just, oh man. <laughs> Are you done? And then can we do something oh yeah, else? she's over there. And she's, Shut. And I'm like, yeah. So we had a Wii, you know. And I watch everyone play Guitar Hero. We, we, oh no, that's different. We, we. They keep going. All right. Anyway, um, Christian, uh, what about the Audi videos? <laughs> How to make a fuse holder. Exactly. Yeah, How to going. make a fuse holder. There you go. Um, 
Okay, Raphael. Why Pioneer makes an amp like the 9601 and not sub to match the amp? And two and one of them. Yeah, uh, okay, okay. So I totally agree with you on that. Um, I think that... I, I'm not even going to begin to rationalize Pioneer's thought on anything they do. Nothing they do makes sense at all. So um, I don't know other than that they just think that we need it. Um, and we sell the hell out of it, so it's not <laughs> like the 9601 is a bad amp. Yeah. You know, we sell a ton of those amplifiers, so. Yes. But no, there are some crazy people working at Pioneer. And while we're mentioning it, Pioneer Australia, Pine, Pine, that area over there, their Pioneer radios have built-in steering wheel controls for basic resistance style steering wheel controls. James was asking me about this the other day. Ours do not. So ours, you know, he was like, why do you guys always have to use like these modules to put in steering yeah. wheel controls? I'm like, don't. why don't you have to use modules? Yeah. But here in the U.S., we have to use, and I think certain parts of Europe, maybe, I don't know, um, you have to use a steering wheel control interface to use those. So, bummer. All right, keep going. All right. Uh, Danny say, any good place for a ground on the trunk of the 19, um, yeah, 94 Corolla? All I see is sheet metal, glue it together. Yeah, there is a lot of sheet metal grouped together in any car. <laughs> typically what we try to do, someone's going crazy with the thumbs up. Thank you, thank yep, you, yep, thank yep, you. Yep, yep. Um, typically what we try to do is find something on the floor um, that is pre-glued, um, but all cars are glued together nowadays. It's, it's perfectly acceptable. Um, you're not gonna run into any issues. If you're really worried about finding the appropriate ground point, get your digital multimeter, put it on continuity, go between the ground up front, stretch it to the back. Ooh, lots of love. Um, thank you, and just thank check you. different ground points and check your continuity as you're doing it until you find one that has the, the least amount of resistance between the battery and the point you're trying to ground to. Thank you, thank you. That's so nice. Okay. All right. Uh, Dan says, so I just installed the ABH-X390 VS into the 2005 Tahoe with both. My question is, does all the bass go through the sub or does it go through the speakers? What were we talking about here? X, what did you just install? AVH X390 to the Tahoe Bose. Okay, so Bose. All right, good question. So you just installed a brand new awesome radio in your Tahoe that has Bose, and you're like, dang, I can't wait to get in there and play with this. Guess what? Only thing you get is an EQ. Time correction, crossover, all that stuff, gone. Mm -hmm. Bose systems have a left and right input only. Even though there are four speaker wires on the plug, it is only using your front left and your front right. Uh, you have fader control because it is sensing the fade between front to rear, but it's not giving you anything else. So anytime you retain the Bose system, as well as like a JBL system or an Infinity system, those systems typically only have <coughs> two channel input and you get limited or no functionality whatsoever out of the head unit other than thank you for the thumbs up and hearts yep um <coughs> limited or no functionality from the head unit other than the 13 band eq that's it can't do time correction no crossover no subwoofer volume control nada so nada. <laughs> think of it as a glorified source unit upgrade that's all they are so you get the cool new Bluetooth, you get the cool steering wheel controls. Yours doesn't have CarPlay, but you could have got the cool CarPlay or navigation or you know USB or whatever, but none of the cool sound features. So that's how that works. All right, are you ever put a hole We get that question a, a lot, subwoofer. by the way. Oh, ported a subwoofer? Come yeah. on, man, 27 years. Who hasn't ported a subwoofer? Yes, I did. I mean, it happens, dude. That was probably my first week doing this, man. 12-inch drill bit right through the subwoofer. Yeah, take you know, that. Not even, even just a regular speaker. Oh, hey, dude, like, it's going to happen. Ah. I mean, you know, no, nobody's perfect, and we're definitely not perfect. Um, we try, you know, you, you, you try to limit the... Um, the, the chances to do any damage to any equipment you're, you're going to do. I mean, as you, I mean, you've seen my hands up close in videos. I mean, yes. they look like some, like a barracuda chewed on them. And the reason why they're like that is because I mean, you know, I, I have blood lie. right here today from trying to do something <laughs> because this will eventually heal and grow back. I mean, I lost part of a finger, you know, so and a tip on this one. Oh so I mean, they'll all this will all heal, but porting a woofer or a speaker sucks yeah. and it's it's not gonna magically fix itself. So yeah, have we done it? Of course. But you know, anytime you're screwing in a subwoofer, I always take and put my fingers 
right, I, I will press down the surround and put my fingers in the way of my drill um, and just go very slow and methodical and that's just, you know, and yeah, there again, it hurts like hell to, to smack your finger with the drill, but <coughs> it'll grow back, All right. hopefully. Jimmy, uh, I never see anyone smile on the sub box. Never see what? Uh, mount oh. the sub box. Uh, what's the best way? Or it's common practice to not strap them down. Uh, typically, we don't strap down sub boxes unless other unless somebody asks for the subwoofer to get strapped down. Now, if you are going to strap down a subwoofer, it's pretty mm -hmm. cool. Um, what you want to do, especially in a trunk, is cut yourself a uh, like a 30 inch, 32 inch piece of uh, one by one, or uh, just just like a lip. Put some carpet on it. We do it with plastic. And what you want to do is lay it right here right here in front of the subwoofer box. So typically there's some form of a flooring, um, like cardboard or carpet or yeah. wood or something like that. Pull, mark where you need it, where the box sits, take your one by one covered in carpet, and then, you know, put a line right here, take it out, screw it in from behind, underneath. All right, and then what you'll have is a nice lip in that carpeted board. So that'll hold that subwoofer. It'll still give it some flexibility to move a little bit because anytime right. you really put them in the car tight, they always rip out because they're, there's no give. Um, and boxes are heavy, so you need a little bit of, uh, they need to be able to slide just a little bit to, to not just rip out of the car. But anyways, then you can lift it up and take it out if you need to get to the spare tire or anything like that. We keep meaning to film a video on this, but we don't, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Um, that'll definitely it. be a, from the, pardon me, from the install base standalone video. All right. Okay, go ahead. All right, uh, let's see. Uh, Terry. Terry say, uh, I want to install an aftermarket radio on my DeVille. Uh, <laughs> with nav, the radio is in the truck. What do I do to use to install the antenna? Uh, you have to run a new antenna. That's is that simple. I mean, those you just run a, a new antenna from front to back. You do have to leave the factory amplifier. That whole system has to stay installed. You can't pull power on it. A lot of times when you're doing those Cadillacs, the car won't start anymore. Yeah. So make sure you leave it plugged in. All right, Michael. Do you prefer Pack or Maestro Idaling for the factory integration? Um, I'm gonna go Pack 99% of the time. That 1% of the time where the iData is like 100% required, like you have a obviously like a Ford, uh, you know the Ford or the Mustang kits are really popular. Um, also with like a Dodge Ram, if it has a tow package, you definitely have to use the iData for sure. Um, but other than that, it's kind of gimmicky. Uh, you know, the gauges are fun for about an hour, and then people are typically over that. We did one the other day. A guy actually took his car into the install bay to the dealer to have his trouble lights reset. Yeah. And I'm like, dude, it's, it's right, it's thing. literally right here on the radio. And he's like, oh, I didn't know that. And I was like, yeah. And he's like, oh, because, you know, there again, he played with it when he got it, and then a year later, he just didn't care. So, um, thank you, Mitch Bennett. Thank so, you. but that's my thought on. They're great harnesses. Both yeah. of them are great harnesses. But I, if if I can avoid, I'm gonna go pack. All right, uh, Robert. I'm um, sorry, uh, Eric. Uh, what's good, guys? Uh, how do I keep the factory DVD player with an aftermarket stereo in Dodge Durango? Um, if it's doable, you'd need the RP4 CHY11. And then the RVD CHY11, I think is what it's called, from PAC. Those are the two harnesses you need if it's capable of doing. Yeah. Um, not all radios are compatible with the RVD CHY11, but you'd need those two harnesses in order for that to function. If it's capable of doing it, I honestly don't know. But if, you know, that's what we would use or that's where we would start. So if you go to packaudio.com and type in your car if you see the rp4 and then you see an rvd harness that's what you would use all right uh let's see robert uh can you put the electrical antenna in the 2011 ford f-150 i suppose if you're real creative you could it's not anything i would be doing all right james uh do you guys do alarms if you know why we do do alarms. We don't do a lot of alarms. It's not a real popular thing here. Most cars come with keyless entry and it really never gets cold enough to actually need remote start to warm your car up, which is what our cars are hot enough as it is. And honestly, you know, it doesn't ever cool down with the humidity we have. So, I mean, I, my car has remote start on it. It came with it and I very rarely ever use it. So, 
But no, we do do alarms, and yeah. All right. Uh, we just Chris, don't film them. I mean, just it's just because it. we don't do a ton of them to be as proficient as we are in everything else. All right, uh, Chris. Uh, hey guys, it is okay to run a five channel arm with the tweeters on channel one and two, mid woofers on the three and four, and put the rear door coax on the fifth channel. No, that fifth channel is going to be a dedicated subwoofer channel. Most all five channel amplifiers, that fifth channel is actively crossed over out of the amplifier, meaning you can't turn off the low pass. So that wouldn't work. Channels one and two and three and four, like you described, would work fine. What you may want to look at is a six channel amplifier. Like Phoenix Gold has their new six channel amplifier. Um, that will allow you to do exactly that and also have the crossovers built into it to actively cross them over. Yeah. All right, let's see. Uh, Eric, hey Dean, do you have any link to you uh, gimbal and little tripods, as a, such as the, something like the toolbox? Probably no, we but we've been asked. It. We're gonna put all the all the photography stuff we use yeah, is gonna make its way into the toolbox because yeah, no, we just use it's a the little the little thingies are Joby's, Joby's. Gorilla Pods. Um, but no, I'll have to go back and figure out what the gimbal head was and all the lighting that we use. Uh, DJ Racha say you guys are awesome all the way from Friona, Texas. Cool. Thank you. Uh, okay, Phoenix checking in. What's up? Uh, let's see. What was that? I was just, you know. Okay. Giving uh, you interesting things to look at while you're reading. Let's see. No, no, yeah. read, read them all, man. I'm trying to. Yeah. I rock uh, Pioneer 3003D4. That's Sean. Sean. Yeah. yeah, he loves his Pioneer. <coughs> Hello from Jamaica. Hey. Sub box one by one yeah. in the Audi video. There okay. you go. Oh, I'm yeah, sure. yeah, that's the Audi. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Christian. Yeah, he, he did that in his. All right. You're looking better today. Thank you. Uh, so, uh, good job, bud. You're I'm looking sorry. good. I'm sorry. Amps mounted in the cell box. Good idea or bad idea? What's mounted in the cell box? Uh, Amps mounted in the fire. Um, okay, so obviously with years and years of doing this, I've mounted plenty of amplifiers on cell phone enclosures. Do we do it? Uh, I don't think we've actually mounted a, an amplifier to a cell phone enclosure probably in the last couple, three or four years. Um, no particular reason. Uh, mainly I try to get the amplifiers to mount flat if I can, just because it's so hot here and these amplifiers now seem to be running way hotter than they used to um, with all these class D amplifiers that just boil. And when you can lay an <coughs> amplifier flat, you, you take advantage of the whole surface area of the heat sink. When you mount an amplifier on the box, your only heat rises, so you only utilize the top portion of the heat sink, which depending on the amplifier mount might be perfectly acceptable. Like the Phoenix Gold amplifiers, the heat sink's all on the top, so that would probably be okay. Um, but the main reason why you wouldn't mount something to the box is because of the <coughs> vibration. And depending on how the amplifier is built, you know, you're, you're shaking the amplifier up, you could pop some of the things off the board. There again, I've never had this problem, but that is why people try to not do it, so to speak. Um, what we do if we do have to mount an amplifier vertical behind a silver frame closure is we'll typically make a second board uh, or an L shape where the sub or the amplifier is mounted to its own substrate and not directly mounted to the subwoofer to kind of insulate between the two. But no, I mean, you can do it. There's nothing wrong with doing it. You know, there's a lot of things now in car audio that people sit there and gawk at and go, oh my God, I can't believe you do that. And it's like, dude, really? I mean, 15 years ago, everybody did it that way and right. no one had an issue with it. And all of a sudden it's, it's the most terrible thing ever. And it's like, I get the evolution of every industry and we're always trying to strive to do better and do better and do better and do better. And with all the technology that we have now, yes, why not? But then again, if it worked then, it's going to work <coughs> now. It just might not be pretty and pretentious. All right. Uh, Eric. Uh, okay, guys. Looking to put the Andre Auto head unit on my 2000A Chrysler 300C. Um, I want to keep my Sirius XM and, of course, keeping my steering wheel controls. How much pain that is going to be? In the 2008. I don't know what kit that is. Uh, I don't know if that's the uh, metric kit or the. I'm gonna kit. check and I can I can respond that. Yeah, he'll get back yeah. to that after the video. Yeah. All okay. Right. If you not, just send me another message. All right. Uh, let's see, Andres. Uh, hi guys, enjoy following you. 
need help with audio installation. I connect the Helix AAX to a high-low converter. When I put the volume up, the converter shuts down for a second. Any idea? Um, yeah, you're overloading the input on the converter. Uh, you probably need a better one and or not, you, you know. All high-level to low-level converters have a voltage um, peak, so to speak, a maximum amount of incoming current that they can handle. Um, so like LC2i handles like an obscene amount of power, that's why it's so big. Mm -hmm. Whereas something like an LC7i from PAC, uh, yeah, LC, what, what, LC7, LC7i, uh, LC7 uh, LC7 yeah. um, handles a lot less current. So you, what you'd want to do is maybe put a voltmeter on that and, and you know set it to AC and, and play like a 40 hertz or a thousand hertz test track yeah. and actually check out how much voltage you have coming into that before it clips off. So you may need to actually just fleece your volume knob and turn that thing LP7 down. LP7 too, sorry. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So that would be the first place I would check. Uh, Calvin, what is your opinion on the Axis digital signal process? Also check your grounds. Okay, sorry. What's Signal that? processor. Which one? Access. Um, we haven't had a chance to play with it yet. So I'm going to hold back on saying anything negative about it because I'm, I haven't touched it. We've used the harnesses. It looks like a really cool product. Uh, well, Carphonics did a review of the piece. It looked pretty neat. Um, I like the smartphone app. I'm, I'm totally loving any manufacturer that builds a smartphone app to do this from. So that in my book, it already gets a thumbs up. I just, we got to get one in and play with it, and we'll let you know. All right, Tom, I say, hi, guys. I have and believe it or not, I don't hate Metro <laughs> Access products. Even though <coughs> we have a lot of bad days with them, they're necessary evil, and sometimes <coughs> they work amazing. I just don't know when. Okay. All right, I'm sorry. Okay, what am I looking at? Uh, Thomas. Thomas. Hi, guys. I have a high-frequency <coughs> whine when the engine is off. No louder if the engine is on and revving engine have a 207 uh, Alpine to auto control DM608 to <laughs> Alpine F4 miss high. Ooh. So you're getting a, a whine. Even when the, uh, Ooh, when wow. the car is off. Let me ask you this. Uh, how are, okay, we've talked about the amplifier's gain inputs. <laughs> Um, if you're running a DM810, that's got a ton of voltage output. I'm assuming that the gains in the amplifiers are as low as humanly possible because that is one thing that Alpines will do is give you floor noise if you have your gains turned up too high to compensate for any lack of voltage input. Um, other than that, I would check to see maybe move the ground for the DM810 over to the uh, where you have your amplifiers grounds maybe directly come out of the ground. Like anytime we're doing one of those, we literally get power, ground, and remote come directly off of the amplifier. So we don't, we don't take them to separate points or distribution blocks. We'll run a four gauge and an 18 gauge into the input of the power section on the amplifier. And that was what goes off to our DM or our LC or anything that needs power. Um, so maybe try that. The other thing too is uh, what kind of car was it in? Uh, oh, he has a 207, 207 so it wouldn't be that. No. Um, man, I, that I, that would be the only thing that would pop in my head off without actually digging into it. Um, you could also try the old RCA trick where you just literally take an RCA, plug it in the back of the radio, drape it through the car, yeah. and plug it into the DM and see if the noise goes away. Maybe you're getting some form of uh, noise inducted through the RCA where it's lying. All right, Corey, um, I have the ABH 5800BHS in my 2009 Corvette. And if you, I upgrade it to the 4200NEX, will be everything plug and play. Uh, yeah. Why a harness? Yeah, yeah, the harness for those two are, are identical. The only thing thing if you have a micro bypass you may need to update the micro bypass may or may not depends but no other than that it should be plug and play yeah uh all right uh robert uh i having problems with my bluetooth on my 3800 oh, the, bluetooth, the bluetooth icon it's off and i can find how to make it work any help it's appreciated so what I would probably recommend doing on that radio is just go right in and do a full restore on the radio and just in case something got shut off, 
I would try that first. And how you can get to the restore settings is, uh, <coughs> it's a 3800, right? Yeah, 3800. So what you want to do first is make sure that the... Um, <coughs> Here, water, man. You're out of water? I don't know. Sure. Um, okay. All right, we'll just breathe for a minute then. Um, so make sure that the emergency brake wire is in the bypass mode, either through the emergency brake, bypass, whatever it is. Make sure it's in bypass mode. Hit the gears in the top right-hand corner. Then go to, once that pulls up the menu, go to the screwdriver wrench, scroll up until you see the thing that says restore settings, tap that, okay? Now what it's gonna do is it's gonna reset the radio all the way to out of the box settings. So it's the first thing that's gonna come up is network uh, standard mode. <coughs> Bang through all those and then see if uh, it will come back up. If it doesn't come back up after that, then what you have is a dead Bluetooth module inside the unit. We've seen it before. It's not real common, but it does happen. All right. See you, Johnny. See you, Johnny. All right. All right. So uh, quick we can answer these. All right, what do we got? Let's see. Uh, what are your thoughts on the line drivers? Are they needed today's car audio? Not that I've ever seen. Okay, if you're doing an SPL system, <coughs> uh, when you need that, yes. If you're just doing a standard system, no. There's no reason to have a line driver. Not that I've seen. Uh, David, where are you going to install on the beach? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. What's up from Tallahassee? What's hey. up, buddy? Uh, Joy, what up, gentlemen? I have a 2017 F350 um, that I want to keep stock, but I want to add the kicker T comps, tens, four okay. amp. I have the pack LP72. Is that going to work? Also, I would like to, I like sub recommendation as a single cap. It is not be crazy. So he has the uh, kicker comps. Uh, he have the comps. Yes. Kicker comp to the LP7. Um. Yeah. The okay. So I'm assuming you don't have the Sony system in there. Um. If you have the Sony system, you're gonna want to pack audio amp pro and not the LP72. If you have the factory non-Sony system, the LP72 will be awesome. You can rock it off of the rear speakers. Yes. Uh, you're good to go there. Um. For shallow box speakers, we recommend the Kicker Comp RTs, not yes. the Kicker Comp Vs or anything like that. You want the Comp RT is going to be the best. Um, the 250 we do, the 250 we just did, he actually got us a box, had a drop ship. They put 112 behind the passenger side of the seat. Yeah. Uh, it was a really funky box, um, but yeah, so. Houston in the house. Yeah, but that's that's Trinidad what I would recommend. Trinidad and Tobago. Yeah. Okay. Good night, buddy. What do you got? Uh, all right. See, you. Scotty. Hey guys, I did dump thing today. I installed a new amp, Class D, and I forget to tie my speakers connection to my amp. Ooh. Yeah. It's a good way to melt some speaker <laughs> wire. Yep. Arc welding 101. All right. What do we got? Anything else? That's it. <coughs> all right. So. Houston. Uh, hey, from Houston. Good night, Trinidad. Okay. Hey, Sue's watching. Yeah. Um, Gabby's watching. Awesome. All right, guys. Well, that's great. If we missed your question, I apologize. Sometimes they scroll by really fast. Fernando likes to go through afterwards and just check them to make sure. Um, you can always ask again if you want. And this will be live again tomorrow on YouTube. So yes. if you're a Patreon follower, prepare to see yourself right after the end of this tomorrow night after see we you. put it on. Thank you, Thank Jason. you, Jason, for all your help as always. You can find Jason at <laughs> Stereo King. Kings. And for everyone else out there, you have a wonderful night, a good week. We'll see you again live on Saturday. Of course, we have videos throughout the whole week for you to enjoy on the YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much as always. Teespring for shirts, yep. DNF tool drawer for tools. Yeah, you guys have Thank a great so night. Much. We'll see you later next time. As always, bye. bye.